the I think the big one was uh, news about Mount Gox. Yeah. Um, so you want to uh, talk about that? Yeah, I think that's a good one. What do you think, Neeks? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about Mongox. So there is so um, Mongox is going to start refounding people that have been uh, that have been impacted by mm -hmm. the situation now a very long time ago in 2014 because of the hack. And so we're talking about I think something like 140,000 Bitcoin. That's um, that's a huge amount of money, and so there is a lot of fear that, depending on the way it is distributed, um, it will actually go on the market and and create some uh, huge dump. And of course, it it created a little bit of panic on that. Um, but then there is also some questions about how it will be distributed. Maybe you want to talk about that, Rob? Sure. I mean, uh, I think originally it was. It was like we're going to refund you at the price of Bitcoin at the time uh, yeah. when the hack happened, and that was obviously very disappointing for a lot of people uh, because you know Bitcoin is worth so much more now, and they wanted their value in Bitcoin, um, which I understand that, but like you also got to admit that when it went from like four hundred dollars to say ten thousand dollars, a ton of those people would have sold then. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a little real unrealistic to assume that every single people that had their Bitcoin on an exchange were going to keep mm -hmm. that Bitcoin for this whole time. So I understand that there might have been some hesitancy or some justification for not doing that. But the end result is um, they have to return the value of the present day value, as I understand. That's right. I think that's, so what, that's what they're hoping for. Go ahead, Neeks. Yeah, what I've seen is that... Um, Initially, was um, it was definitely decided that they would get four hundred and eighty-three dollar per Bitcoin, but then in twenty eighteen, uh, a court in in Japan actually approved a different way to proceed uh, instead of bankruptcy, and so it opens more flexible things. And it is expected that they will get their value in coin or um, the assets directly. So we don't we don't know. Actually, nobody knows. There is a lot of speculation. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we will see what happens, but it has definitely triggered. Um, that's... Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say. That yeah, it, I was going to say it, it triggered volatility on the market. And I, I don't think it will stop before, before things start moving and some more clarity. It's always the fear, right? Fear and uncertainty yeah. that mm -hmm. creates but, the more volatility. Yes, exactly. I thought it was funny because, like, you know, you see it starting to dump. And, like, if you've been in this a while, you've seen it dump a thousand times. Um, and, you know, all of a sudden Twitter's filled with it's going below 50. And, you know, the end result might be that. I don't know. Um, I'm not a trader. Uh, but I knew that this time, like, this particular spike down wasn't going to be that. It bounced off of, like, 59 something. Um, but the real issue is really um, what people want to what people who are not used to this are, are hearing i think to me um and yeah. so they they hear mixed messages they freak out uh especially the etf people uh, to me they're the, they're going to be the ones who are most likely to just dump everything get out um the or i guess new people maybe too uh so i think we're going to see these until there's even more clarity uh i the thing i don't quite get is it, there was a hack where does this bitcoin come from it wasn't all recovered, so I'm, I'm confused how people are getting their, expecting to get all their money back. I should say, like, wh where is that coming? I don't from? know. I mean, it's it's they have sixty five thousand. I think is what most uh, what what is being spoken about that is going mm -hmm. to go to holders if it does go that way. Right? We still right. don't know. We know the court decided, as Neeg stated, that um, they would get their like asset or their asset back in, in what it would be. Um, that 65,000 is where that FUD is coming from. I yeah. that's, it's a little that's understandable where I'm shows speculating up on the, the FUD is coming yeah. from, right? There's only two ways that shows up in full on the market though. The first, the first way is Mt. Gox chooses to, or is forced to pay people in fiat because mm -hmm. if they have those coins, they're going to dump 100% of those. I mean, like it may not all happen at once, but in the end, they don't have any money, and that's where the money is. So they're going to convert it. 
Of course. People get their money back in Bitcoin. Um, some of those people are absolutely going to dump it, but it won't be 100%. Um, no. So I, I think the better condition is that people get some value back in the crypto asset rather than <laughs> rather than demanding yeah, I, or, or having to get fiat. If If most people sell, there's... Again, we have that mentality as we spoke about in the last segment, right? The last update was there's a hodl mentality. You're trained to hodl, but there's also a trader mentality, which says you don't get emotionally attached to anything. And there's a percentage and a portion of our community that's gotten larger that's like that. We don't care about the project. What we care about is the profit. And then you sell and recover whatever you put into it and those kinds of trading uh, uh, theories that people go into that. And so I agree, certain people will sell. But I think if you're forced to sell, which is which is where you have a person, wh whatever they have, let's say you need a new car or something, and and you have Bitcoin, no matter what, if all of your liquidity is tied up in Bitcoin, you have to sell that Bitcoin. And you have to sell it now. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a different kind of a sell. That's not quite distressed, but if Mount Gox has to sell, there will be a process. It will be a time, you know, that period that they'll have to follow through this process, I'm sure, because there will be serious downward pressure on the market if they have to liquidate all of that. I know that you each have different opinions on how that would happen, but let's just say it does go to exchanges there will be agreements with the exchanges they'll probably take custody of those assets they will probably um then liquidate those assets there may be other ways that you guys would want to speak about but the fact is is that no matter what if sixty five thousand dollars comes from one person and goes to the market for sale that's a lot more downward pressure than it goes to thousands of people and some of them hold some of them <laughs> <laughs> putting cold storage, whatever they're going to do. Some of them just set it and forget it. They don't care. And others sell. Um, that's a lot different. It's this distributed selling pressure is much broader than if one major entity is in a distressed situation to sell. So I understand why there's some of that FUD. On the other side of the coin, if you're in crypto today, and you're new at crypto today, you're getting used to the, the extreme ups and downs, the roller coaster effect. This is not stable like some other mediums you might be um, participating in. Crypto can have huge ups and downs. So going from 70,000 to 59,000 to me, I didn't even pay attention. Not because it doesn't affect me, it's because how many times has it has a change like that happened to each of us in the time that we've been here it's huge i don't see that i don't freak out it's different yeah i, I think either. it's it's a long-term vision bigs just slipped a paper to me under the table here um so <laughs> I, I, and i think it's interesting to to kind of go over so uh all, almost a million B, uh, btc got lost so nine hundred forty thousand got lost uh, and they recovered 141,000, almost 142,000. Mm -hmm. So, so that's good, uh, and that's why that number is what's available. Um, definitely, lawyers are going to be taking some of that. What it's totally. also, I think, uh, what's also interesting, I think, is that uh, they recovered 141, 142,000 Bitcoin. But then that also means they recovered 142,000 um, BCA uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, because that split happened after. Um, so that's interesting too. All the, you know, all their clients would have gotten that Bitcoin cash. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the value maybe, of the Bitcoin cash is obviously way lower, but still. Maybe we can say a word about that because it was at the time that it, it has kind of changed, right? Like it's not, we don't have forks of Bitcoin everywhere popping up, forks of important coin popping up, but mm -hmm. there was a time where if somebody was forking, um, a somewhat important crypto, then everybody was interested in getting this crypto because then you would have the same the <laughs> same crypto like the same amount on that on that copied blockchain with yeah. some few some few changes and a BCH is one of those like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So there are others. They're just so insignificant. But they're so matter. valueless. <laughs> the only other one I can think of, although I think BSV forked from BCH, didn't it? Wow. Not, not I paid little to no attention after me how many years? After four years, you expect yeah. me to remember a, a coin I could care less about? <laughs> well, they make I, I really noise. don't care. I, I anything you, I related to anything I, related to that stuff. I'm sorry I brought up the bad coin. <laughs> no, I, I look, yeah, but look, a coin is a coin is a to, is a to, token. It, is there a was token a time theirs, but the fork was the new meme, the new meme yeah. coin, you know, right. like the ICO yeah. was the new meme coin. It's like there was the fork period, the fork mm -hmm. cycle. There was, you're right. <laughs> but anyway, it was know. something. But anyway, you know, I hope I hope people get their Bitcoin. Um, I hope they keep it. Uh, but uh, I, I think I, I think that's one of the things that that we've been hearing. There are individuals that, at least, I'm aware of, and I think you guys are too. They um, there are some situations to where, if you have lost Bitcoin, I'm going to pull back a little bit as I'm stuttering through that. If you have a situation to where you have. Bitcoin at Mount Gox and they've rejected you, you need to have documentation. You need to have that original email and you may need to have an attorney because I do know that there are some people who have the email chain, have the validation, have the confirmation of receipts and deposits and still own addresses related to their transactions at Mount Gox, both in and out. And, um, they're being rejected and it i don't know why or what it's i don't have anything this is knowledge you receive from a person but if you're in that situation the only way that you're going to be served if you believe that to be true is you need some you need a legal person to help you <laughs> there's right. no way there's That's no right. way and i find it be interesting this because on your own. you can see that if you read the news uh I think nobody really talks about the Bitcoin cash part. And mm -hmm. in fact, it's like 45 million right now, right? So there is the same risk for those um, Bitcoin cash than the Bitcoin, but the Bitcoin are valued at 6 billion. So obviously, if that comes to the market, the 44 million are now irrelevant, but 44 million on Bitcoin cash is not nothing. That's true. That's true. 44 million Bitcoin cash. <laughs> Downward pressure for BCH. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no one is talking about no this one. That's about really that. what yeah. I wanted to highlight. I, I, I thought it was interesting. While the risk is probably higher than the Bitcoin one in, in reality. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so they get from the 140 and then there is um, some cut. I'm not familiar with completely the whole process, how it went, but basically they are deducting some fees, I would assume, and they call it early payout. Um, and then at the end, they get to about 95,000 Bitcoin, um, out of, among which 65,000 are going to individuals. So that's, uh, that's yep. the document that we have. Um, we'll see how it happens. But yeah, it's supposed to happen like in the next few weeks, I believe, right? I can't remember yep. the date. If I've seen a date somewhere. We'll probably return to it in our little podcast here because uh yeah. the end result may be different than what everything we know right now to at least right. to some degree <laughs>